How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. It's 8.30 in the morning. Doing, <laughs> it's very refreshing. Haven't, <laughs> I actually haven't woke up this early like for a long period of time. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, awesome. Um, yeah. Just to let you know, I, I'm Aaron. I'm a, an actor based in London, and I've been a yeah, friend of the Film Awards for as long as I can remember now. And um, and yeah, they they said they I got the opportunity to watch um, your film yesterday. Wow, mm. you are very talented, my friend. And uh, mm. as kind of a recent student myself, I, I was I'm blown away by your talent, man. Um, Thank you. So congratulations, you deserve all the credit. Um, Thank you. And uh, so I've got a list of questions they want me to ask you. And the truth is, mm. I tend not to stick to them because I get too interested. But um, the first question is, you know, if you could just quickly describe yourself and describe the project um, to, yeah. the, to us. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is E. Um, I'm a writer director who's currently based in New York. Uh, I'm from Shanghai, China. Um, I recently just graduated from NYU to School of the Arts. Um, I currently, I guess, desperately in search for a job right now. Uh, that's myself. And um, about this project, because, um, you know, growing up, um, I grew up mostly with my grandparents at the time because my parents were very busy. And uh, we had this little small backyard and where my grandpa would always tell me stories. And sometimes he got bad memories. He just kept telling me the same story again and again. And uh, he was a war veteran during the civil war in China. And sometimes he would tell me a little bit about the war. And but which during the time I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have a strong impression. And I was always caught by something, you know, might be trivial. And uh, for example, this thing like he he once told me that he got a friend uh, in in the army and uh, who was a deserter. And um, at the time, I was thinking that, oh, well, what, what is meant to be a deserter? I don't, I didn't have that strong, you know, opinion in it. And um, and later on, I think when I was twelve, my grandpa, because at the time he was already ninety years old, and uh, he took uh, took the whole family to it. I thought at the beginning, I thought it was going to be a trip, but it turned out he built a, you know a tomb for himself and uh, he said he wanted to be buried there because that that's the place you know where he grew up that's the place you know about you know where he he spent most of the time as a as a child before you know becoming a soldier because at the time you know not many people were willing to become soldiers some just became for you know for you know because they they had they, they got money for you or they provide food and uh, i think that's the main reason he went to the army at the time and then i i start feeling like you know i the, the memory of the the story he told me just became you know in my mind again i i thought it's maybe it's not just a coincidence maybe i can do something you know to combine themselves i think that's the original idea of this story yeah wow mm -hmm. Wow. And it's even more compelling now that I know where it comes from. Wow. And one, one of the things uh, that really struck me was how visual, like how beautifully visual it was. And um, uh, I know because I, I, I had pictures of your Instagram in the pack that I was given and I was like, wow. So is that something that really like, are you a visual person? And then you kind of, yeah, are you a visual person? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess I started off being very visual, uh, which is something great, but also like a shortcoming I start more and more to realize. And it's, so that right now I'm trying to actually overcome like just being purely visuals because, uh, you know, it's very tempting you know, to shoot beautiful images. But uh, at the same time, you have still have to stick, stick to the you know core of your story, because after all, it's about, you know, storytelling, not just visual telling. Yeah. Wow. And mm. and obviously you're a recent you're a recent grad and you're a student. And what was like the biggest learning curve as a student over the last sort of four years then? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is definitely the peer pressure you get when you're at film school. Um, yeah. you know, before when you're at the when you're at high school, you know, you went to some filmmaking club and you might be just the only one, you know, who's good at camera, you know, doing this. But all of a sudden, you're surrounded by this whole bunch of people. And, um, 
you know, solved and who are far more, you know, professional than you and being on the same time, same set, working together is definitely, you know, very pressured. And yeah. uh, also, I think it's the, it's, I mean, you probably like thought you're going to know why you want to do film at the very beginning when you entered the college, but uh, this, this is going to change. Like for me personally, um, you know, I always thought it's going to be like a pure craft sort of thing. You know, it's something that's gonna 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 get me job. <laughs> gonna get me job. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, when I was a freshman year, and and then later on, and you know, after taking some some great classes and meeting some great people, I no longer see it just as a pure craft or a you know, it shouldn't be a game of ego. Of course, I start seeing it sort of like a like a therapy to mm -hmm. myself first and then to my audience. Cause I always believe a, uh, you know, a filmmaker should always have almost an acute sensibilities to other people's vulnerabilities. And then you start making film about, about it. Um, and during this process, you started forming, almost forming a, an acceptance to your own vulnerabilities. And I think that's the most important part of filmmaking. I mean, that's what I feel about right now. Maybe it's gonna change many years later, but uh, this is what I'm going to stick to. Wow, wow, man, that was really inspiring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've you've had to really look at yourself quite deeply, mm -hmm. haven't you, over this last four right. years? And yeah, and um, so what sort of the things that you found really challenging making this film? What were like? Because it's a very personal story, clearly. Right, right. Was it challenging in any way? Yeah, it is. Cause uh the first thing definitely being the, the time we had, it was it was actually we like prepared the film like in a very short period of time. And also because I acted in the film myself because not because I wanted, because we couldn't find a find a proper grandson and the time was really so <laughs> short. So I, I ended yeah. up becoming the grandson myself in the story. And uh, it was very hard to, you know, to to direct it while at the same time act it on mm -hmm. set. And also I would say it's the I mean, I, I would put it as a as a you know, good thing and a bad thing. Like, cause uh, at the time I, it was my freshman year. I didn't have that much of, you know, technical knowledge about filmmaking. And uh, we didn't have a proper rehearsal. And uh, we, I don't, I didn't even have a shot list or storyboard. You just imagine <laughs> a bunch of kids just went to the film and started filming and, you know, <laughs> imagining that. But, but I'll say that's, I start seeing it as a good thing as, um now because you know many great directors they don't you know they don't always have a shot list or a storyboard because they think you know if you are scheduling pre-planning everything you are sort of missing that magical moment you get on set because you don't you no longer you just rely on the thing you prepare but you don't you don't actually feel the moment feel the location and, and i think one thing we did really well was to you know we we actually spent some time just wandering through the space and trying to incorporate that into our story, and which is something I wish I could do again if I get a chance. Because now, when you have, you know, a bigger crew and people, you don't, you couldn't just, you know, just come to set without prepared. That, that's impossible. The yeah. producers got to kill you, you know. But, yeah, but I think that's one of the the the. Now that you've told me that, mm -hmm. I think that's why the film's so beautiful. It's because you allowed it to have so much space. I mean, I, who am I? But I feel mm -hmm. like for me, I was really taken away with, I guess, some of the lack of structure, maybe in some way. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I I really enjoyed it. Really, really. I'm I'm That's very true. impressed. I mean, I'm no one, but still, <laughs> you, <laughs> you still right. moved me. Yeah. Um, and like, did anything sort of funny or weird or crazy happen during the during the shooting or the yeah, because, uh, you know, I had a producer at the time, but also, you know, it's a small project. Uh, sometimes you have to self-produce a lot. So the tombstone you, you see in the film, uh, actually, I bought it online. Uh, at the time, my mother <laughs> didn't know I, I bought a tombstone. <laughs> and I remember it was, um, I remember it was discount season. It was pretty absurd. Like the the company said, oh, if you if you book one tombstone, we're going to give you one for free. I was like, no, I don't want more. 
<laughs> yeah, so I ordered a custom and it and I I forgot to tell them like to deliver to somewhere else. So it got right delivered to my front door. And my mother was like, What are you going to do? You're crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. Wow. That, that was yeah, that was a fun experience. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, we we uh, we went to the field and we put the tombstone there, and uh, <laughs> and and then it started raining, and uh, I at this, I had a very little impulse just just left the tombstone there, but I'm afraid I'm going to scare somebody. So yeah. in the end, we just destroyed the tombstone using hammers. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but wow. still, it was too heavy, so we sort of we left some debris there, and uh, hope people that didn't get scared. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure it's fine. Right. Yeah. And um, how many how many people did it take to make the film? What was the total crew and cast number? Um, I'll say um, without the actors, we had around um, I get, I think the main crew was like eight people. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mostly just just the classmates I had in college and some of my friends from high school, for example, the people who acted as my grandpa, younger grandpa uh, in the story. Oh, awesome. And, and you know, what keeps you creatively motivated? You know, yeah. what? what yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think there there's a saying that, you know, all directors only only tell one story and. And as the times goes by, they have to make that story clearer and clearer and, uh, you know, to make the story once more narrow and larger. I, I think I'm still sort of in this moment in search of that one story I wish to tell. Yeah, I, I think that's the biggest motivation I have. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's really amazing. And, and, and do you have, like, when you are inspired, what, mm. where does that come, when does that tend to come from? Just... Is it music? Is it art? Is it other people? What you know? Um, yeah, all um, of those things. Something I really benefit from learning from one of my professor is that she has a really unique approach when asks us to write a script. Like she didn't just let up, you know, write a script. You know, just sitting, sitting in the desk and looking, just playing at the the laptop for an hour, hours. You know, he asked. She asked us to write journals or. Uh, some sort of you could it could be a po poetry or even some you know write something and just non-stop and uh, and then you forget about it and uh, after maybe a week you start uh, looking at it again maybe you you're gonna find a, a clue or something common between these the thing you've written down and I think that's really helpful for me that's mm -hmm. really cool yeah and and what advice you know what advice did you get or would you give someone who's in your position now or who's about to be in your position? Um, I mean, I'll give one realistic one and the other one is more God. You know, spiritual. The realistic one would be, you know, um, you should uh, learn some, some, you know, cause I, cause all of the, all of my friends who recently just graduated, it was the some person who the first started making money. I think like if you're a film student, you know, before graduate, you should really have something that you could and not it might not be the thing you like the most, but you should have something that you can just keep you being on set because you you can learning from other people experience without being the main creative force. So you you don't have that that pressure, I guess. Mm. And the other one I will give, um, I think the biggest one of the biggest piece of advice I have is, you know, don't take others advice too seriously, because uh, after all. You know, you have to find your own system that fits you the best. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm definitely going to take that advice from you, <laughs> but not take it too seriously. So yeah. that I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and um, what's next for you? Like what, what's, you know, what's... Uh, are you Are you working on anything or... Yeah, uh, I'm actually working on the post-production of my thesis film, uh, which is... Again, it's a family story. It's about my aunt and my grandma because uh, they, they've they been living together for almost 20 years and my grandma just recently passed away. And um, I wanted to have some, because my grandma had Alzheimer's and uh, my, my aunt has been the one taking care of her all these years. And I and now, but even though it's it was her death, um, but I feel like, you know, they, they both have some sort of freedom right now. And which is some this this bond, like, it was something I always wish to, 
you know, remember in a way of making a film. Yeah, that's my thesis I'm working on right now. Wow. Go smash it. I hope you, uh, I hope it goes really well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, you seem to write very personally then. Everything comes from very personal experience for you. Yeah, because I think, you know, because I, I have, I have some classmates who are much more senior than me. And uh, for example, I had a, I had a, this, this woman sitting be beside me in a class, like she's a mother of three. And I, and I, sometimes she would tell me like how she parent uh, about some parental tips, like, you know, how to put your, um, you know, calm down your, your kids when they're on the airplane, something like that. And uh, I just couldn't help imagining like if we were to write the same story about being parents, like hers would be much more fun and realistic. Cause now I, I still didn't, I still don't have that, you know, life experience. So starting from something very personal, I could at least say it's something I'm confident about. Even though when you're on set, there people will be like, you know, you know, oh, that's not something uh, should be like realistically, but I could say it happened. It's my family story. You know, you yeah. have that confidence. Yeah. Yeah. But th that also means that when you do produce it, it is more real, right? Right, right, right. For sure. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I I've got, I could probably sit here and talk to you all day, man. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I find you really interesting. And but it it's, I just, uh, um, I've got, we kind of got to wrap up, but genuinely mm. keep going. And I think your, your film is absolutely extraordinary. And thank you very much. I really, look, and you know, stay in touch with us and, you know, send us everything that you ever make because we'd love to see it. And thank um, you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. And, and yeah, man. Also, you know, mm. I, I was thinking about your sort of like, do you, like how much confidence do you have in your own filmmaking? Because you should have a lot because, you know, <laughs> You're fantastic. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I actually had this thought last night because um. You know, as a filmmaker, you always have to go through this, you know, roller coaster ride of your self esteem. You know, sometimes you after you have you coming up with the idea, you you're gonna be like, oh, this is awesome. This this definitely gonna win me something. And the other day, you're gonna, oh, I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> you get that that roller coaster ride a lot. I guess, you know, just also because um. Because you're making shorts, because I am making shorts right now. That's something I'm actually quite grateful for because you don't have that the tension, uh, that pressure from making a feature. If this one doesn't work, you know, just forget about it. If this one works, you forget about it as well. You know, just yeah. don't let your last film define what kind of filmmaker you are. Just forget about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's really yeah. good advice. Really, really good advice. Um. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us so Thank early you. as well. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All, all the best, man. And uh, right. enjoy the rest of your morning and day. You too. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye.